This is the story of the Faces of Easter, Part 7, from the Complete Works of Godly Play by Jerome Berryman. It's published by the Church Publishing Company and under copyright right to the Godly Play Foundation. Good morning. I'm glad you're here. Um, godly Play is a really special time for us, a time to be with God, to hear God's stories. And so in order to do that, we need to be ready. So I want you to be ready. Take a deep breath and blow it out. One more. In and blow it out. Be ready, be still, and ready to hear this story. But there are other ways that we can get ready to be with God too. One of them is that we can sing our song. I'm going to say it and you're going to sing it with me. Oh God, we adore you. Lay our lives before you. How we love you. Jesus, we adore you. Lay our lives before you. How we love you. Spirit, we adore you. Lay our lives before you. How we love you. Another way we can get ready is we can light the candles. Once, there was a person who did such amazing things and said such incredible things that people wanted to follow, but they didn't know who he was. And so one day, they just asked, who are you? And he said, I am the light. Just sit for a minute and enjoy the light. In the beginning, the baby was born. God chose Mary to be the mother of God. Stop. Listen. Listen carefully to those words. God chose Mary to be the mother of God, and the word was born a wordless child. Even when he was a baby, Jesus could see the sign of the cross in Mother Mary's face. And when he looked at Father Joseph's face, he could see the cross there too. Mother Mary and Father Joseph held the baby very close. They kept him warm. They gave him everything he needed to grow. And he began to grow. And the baby grew into a boy. When he, was a, when he was about 12 years old, he went with his mother and his father and um, many other people from their town of Nazareth to the great city of Jerusalem to keep one of the high holy days. They walked in, the, into, in between the great high gate and the day and after the celebration, when it was time to go home, they went with their people, the people from Nazareth and began the long walk home. But suddenly, Mary and Joseph looked, and they couldn't find Jesus. They thought he had been with the other children. And so they turned and hurried back to Jerusalem. They went through the dark and narrow streets. They went back to where they had bought their food in the marketplace. They went back to the place where they'd spent the night, but they couldn't find him anywhere. And finally, they went to the temple, and there was Jesus. He was surrounded by the priests and the rabbis. And when Jesus spoke, they listened because he knew so much. And when they spoke, Jesus listened because he wanted to learn more. Well, Mary and Joseph asked him the question that parents ask ch children for whom there really is not an answer. They said, why did you do this? 
And he said something rather odd. He said, did you not know I would be in my father's house? But they didn't understand. They lived in a house next to, next to um, Joseph's workshop, his carpentry shop, in Nazareth. They didn't understand, but they didn't forget either. And then the boy grew to be a man. And when Jesus was about 30 years old, he went down to the Jordan River where his cousin John was baptizing people. See? Here's the back of John's head. He was a wild man. Look at his crazy hair. And Jesus walked directly into the water and stood before John and said, baptize me. And John looked at him as though he was seeing him for the first time, and he said, I can't baptize you. You are the Messiah. You are who we have been waiting for. You must baptize me. And Jesus said, no, it is written that you will go first to prepare the way. Baptize me. And so Jesus went down into the dark and chaotic waters, and when John pulled him up again, there were people that said that a dove came down from heaven and flew very close to him. There were other people who said that they heard a voice and the voice said, this is my beloved son and I am well pleased with him. After the baptism, Jesus continued to the other side of the Jordan River and went into the wilderness. He would stay there for 40 days and 40 nights to consider what work it was that he was going to do. While Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, there wasn't much to eat or to drink. And one day he heard a voice and the voice said, see those stones over there? Why don't you take one of them and turn it into bread so you have something to eat? And Jesus said, a human being needs more than just bread to eat. And then Jesus felt as though he had been transformed to the top of the temple in Jerusalem and he could look down and see the courtyard. And the voice said, if you truly are the son of God, why don't you jump and see if God sends angels to catch you before you hit the stones? And Jesus said, no, we don't test God. And then suddenly Jesus could see all the kingdoms in all the world. And the voice said, if you follow me, I will let you be the king of all of those kingdoms. And Jesus said, no, I am to be a king, but not that kind of king. And Jesus crossed the river Jordan and left the desert to do the work that he was to do. the work Jesus was to do. Jesus' work was to become close to people, especially the people that no one else wanted to be close to. When people became close to Jesus, they could see things they hadn't seen before. They could do things they hadn't done before. They became better. Jesus' work was also to tell parables, and so he told parables until one day he realized that he was to become a parable himself. 
and he turned and walked toward Jerusalem for the last time. In the time when Jesus went to Jerusalem, it was during Passover, and there were many people from many different lands there. Um, they all thought they were coming to see him become king, but they weren't really paying attention. Jesus came into Jerusalem, but he didn't come on a great white horse, and he didn't come on the sh shoulders of soldiers. He came on a donkey, and he didn't even own the donkey. He had borrowed it. But still, on Sunday, the people came and they bought palm branches and they waved them, which was what you did for a king. And then on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, he taught in the temple. And every night, he went back to the Mount of Olives with the Twelve. People began to whisper. They began to say, the Mount of Olives, why? That's where the angels are coming from God's army. To, to, to take away all the Roman soldiers. But on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, he went to the temple to teach. He was there one day, and he saw an old woman come into the temple. She was walking toward the money box. And Jesus said to people, look, listen, can you hear what she puts in the money box? But they couldn't hear anything, because she put in the smallest coin. And it was all that she had. And then a rich man came into the temple. And he had bags and bags of money. He had so much money, he had to have people help him carry it. And when he put it in the money box, it clanged and rang. And Jesus said, who gave the most? Some people said the old woman. Some people said the rich man. And then on Thursday, the temple guard said, we'll take him tonight. But on Thursday night, they couldn't found, find him. Jesus and the Twelve went through the dark and twisted streets to the Mount of Olives, where they found a house. And they went up to the top floor, and they had their last meal together. When dinner was over, and everyone had eaten everything that they wanted, Jesus took a piece of bread, and he broke it. And he thanked God for it. And then he said, whenever you do this, I will be with you. And then he took a glass of wine and he thanked God for it. And he said, whenever you share wine like this, I will be with you. But they didn't understand. He was always saying things like that, things they didn't understand, but they remembered. And later they would understand. And just as they were finishing dinner, Judas got up and left hurriedly. And they all went to the Mount of Olives, to the Garden of Gethsemane, because Jesus wanted to pray. And when he was done praying, he joined the others. And then Judas came out of the darkness. He greeted Jesus, and that was a sign. That was a sign to the guards, to the temple guards, that they were to take him. They came out of the darkness too. And they grabbed Jesus and took him away. The twelve all disappeared into the darkness. It was a chaotic night. In the morning, they took Jesus outside the city and they crucified him.
he died in the middle of the day the next day and the sky turned dark and they took him down from the cross and they put him in a cave and they ro rolled a giant rock in front to cover the opening. Saturday was such a quiet day. It was as though you could hear the earth breathe. And on Sunday, Sunday it was the women. They were the brave ones. They wanted to go to the tomb. They, they just wanted to be near Jesus, even if it was sad. But when they arrived, the, the, the rock was moved away and the tomb was empty. Somehow, Jesus had died, but he was still with them. And he's still with us today, especially in the bread and the wine. So, we have this part of the story. But if we have that part of the story, we have this part of the story. And if we have this part of the story, we have this part of the story. We can't, we can't get them apart. And that is the mystery of Easter. And that is why the color changes. But wait, the story has a beginning and a middle and an end if we have this side. But if we have this side, the end is also a beginning. But this is not right. Wait, I have an idea. And now you see that the story goes around and around. And the beginning, the end, is also a beginning. I wonder, I wonder what you think is just the best part of this story. I wonder where are you in this story, in this circle? I wonder if there's any part we could take out and still have all we need. And I wonder what work you would like to do today. But before that, let's change the light. Right now, the light is just in one place, but we can change the light and we can make it be in many places. See the light? It's going up and it's filling the room and it's going to go out and it's going to fill everywhere in the world. I'm so glad you came today. You each brought your own special gifts to share. Take this story and hold it in your heart this week and keep on wondering. May God bless you and keep you.